Let me give you the rest of the definition. To point, to appoint, to consecrate, to make, uh, to make sacred and set apart. It is part of one's devotion. Take a neighbor, we gotta have devotion. Gotta have devotion. Well, you know, I, I'm really all that reading and study and, and worship and praise. And you need devotion. You know, something that uh, I know, Apostle. Uh, uh, they going to probably go over this message. We try to do that for one another, but he told me something. He said uh, one uh, Baptist preacher told him, well, I think it was a Lutheran, told him that um, made a lot of sense to me. He said that <clears throat> when God is bringing us to a level of intimacy with Him, He want to, you know, it's a, it's a word, two words associated in the New Testament. It says to come apart. You ever heard that? When God is doing something, He always brought people to come apart with Him, right? He said something that the guy told him. He said that when we don't come apart, we come apart. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Boy! Yeah. And you try to figure out why is it that my life is up and down and a roller coaster? Because you won't come apart. You won't get into it. So because of, cause that's the infrastructure. Being devoted to the Lord. Consecrated to the Lord. Understanding what sanctification means. Makes everything in your life it gives it sense. It gives us you have self-worth. It gives value when you put God first. People say, well, you know, people told me that I'm close because I ain't going to get to it. People always say, well, you know what? I had a young man that was here in the leadership and, you know, he, had to, he was wrestling with, uh, you know, putting family first before God. And I had to tell him, I said, it ain't family first. That's a lie from the hell. It's not. It's God first in family. God first in finances. God first in everything. You can't segregate and augmentate God. It ain't like a scale. You know, God, family, church. No. God is first. God is first in family. God is first in church. And God is first in your finances and every other thing. God is just first. Tell you that he's just first. Yeah. Yeah. See, we get in trouble when we try to negotiate that. Am I right? We try to redo it. No, God is just first. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness, everything else will be at. Seek ye first. That's what it is. He is first. First. That's why they call it the first fruit. So when you get up early, you, when you get up, you seek him first. Anybody ever saw God first? No, don't raise your hand. Anyway. <laughs> said, no, that, I ain't got time. But if, when you, it just, when I learned to seek him first, I found out that the whole day goes right. When you wake up, and see, y'all think seeking God first is finding a little safe place in your house, put on your music, and get a pillow, and have your Bibles up on a stand. Because that's what we taught in the 90s. In the 90s, they said you got to find a place in the house, get in the closet, pray closet. And that's good. I mean, those are good habits. But I'm here to tell you, you can sanctify the Lord in your heart. You get to the point where you can be in your car and you can seek Him first. You, can, you might have a doctor's appointment, on, and on the way to the doctor's appointment, you, you, you're seeking Him first. Amen. You can be going to your job at 5 a.m., but in your car, you just, if you and Him, He's first. Don't try to do it at night. When you're in your bed, then try to come up with your prayer and try to seek God. No, you go, especially you open your Bible. You talking about a sedative? You ain't never slept. All you gotta do, if somebody said they have a problem sleeping, just give them a Bible. As soon as they open up, they're gonna be knocked out. <laughs> Father, we bless you. Thank you for this word this morning. I just pray and touch, minister to our hearts. There's so much more than what we've been. You calling all of us, no matter what our religious background or pedigree is, there's always more. We can't disconnect us ourselves from what you're calling us into. The shepherd of our soul is beckoning and summoning us to higher heights, deeper depths, some things that make for our peace that only can come out of relationship with you. And I pray as a house that we will respond accordingly and let you to work in us to will and to do of your good pleasure because that's what it's all about. It's about your good pleasure. It's not about our pleasure. It's about what you've already assigned for us. And by your graciousness, you've allowed us to be partakers of it. How glorious is that to know that you've opened up the door for us to be
be able to move into things that we couldn't do on our own. That place that you, even we talked about with that prepared place that can only come out of a relationship with you. We thank you for that. That this message that we will move from where we've been to follow you all the way through. That where we've been is not where we'd rather be. You've assigned some, so much more for this house as a collective body, as a corporate body. Let us begin to yearn for the very fulfillment of the things that our ears are hearing. Let us not be distracted as we leave this place. Let there be a witness, Father. I pray that this week can be a witness, that someone, something will speak to them to let them know it's time to move up. It's time to move on. It's time to go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.